Oh, hey guys. Great job, right? <laughs> Welcome to Spider Cafe, a place for creepy crawly talk and microphotography. Today we're finally gonna talk about microphotography. Our first request, and uh, it's much appreciated, so why not oblige, right? And uh, thank you Tyler T1117 uh, for this request, so let's get right to it. I got into microphotography about three years ago, and the reason was basically I was admiring some pictures. I was always into bugs, you know, and spiders and etc. snakes. Uh, but I was always admiring the pictures of macrophotography legends like Dustin Rhodes and Marcus Kahn and it was basically always out of reach for me until I finally was able to afford the cheapest uh, DSLR and let me show you which one it was and I was using it basically all the way to 2019 and it's Nikon D3400 and it's a pretty good camera for beginners. Uh, I would recommend it. A couple of things that I wasn't big on is um, the white balance is a little bit off. And I'm going to talk about white balance in our part two of this video. So that wasn't big. And also it's not weatherproof, which we had like a one panic moment when we went to Costa Rica, when everything was fogging up on the camera. And basically I wasn't able to shoot. And we are there in Costa Rica, middle of nowhere. And, you know, my, I came there to take pictures and my camera is basically useless. So that was a big panic, but then I learned that this happens actually with a lot of cameras, even I assume it could happen with some of the weatherproof ones. And basically the way around it is you put the camera in a sealed bag and it can be even just like your backpack, your camera backpack, and you leave it outside. So we left it in a trunk of a car and basically I was able to shoot again next day. And after that, every night we would come back, I would just leave it in a trunk of a car. Those are a couple of downsides of this camera, but you can actually buy it as a bundle with a couple of lenses. And I think it's a really good deal. And I'm not really promoting Nikon or Canon or anything. I'm just telling you guys what I use basically. If I would go this route again, I would probably actually go maybe even Olympus because they have the lightest cameras and the smallest cameras. And I've seen some amazing results. And again, I want to give a quick shout out. If you guys want to check out a really good Olympus photography, go to Jeremy Nature Photography on Instagram. And he has some really, really stunning pictures uh, all done with Olympus. My first lens was actually Tokina 100 and it's a great lens. It's a third party lens. It's all manual. So you have to kind of learn, you know, manual photography. And I'll talk a little bit about my settings too. I really like that lens. It's not very expensive, relatively not expensive. You know, everything in photography is kind of expensive, unfortunately. So I was using that for the beginning and for the flash and I continue using that. I'm using right now single head Godox flashlight. I really like it. Initially I had a twin head flashlight and it was good but actually I would go even back to it eventually because you can get some really creative photos and what's great about twin flashlight which you have basically two heads right here of uh, flash. Uh, you can put them on flexible arms and let's say you have a bug that's under leaf you can place the arm in the right uh, spot where you're still gonna get light so that's really good about it but unfortunately for me i bought a nikon twin flashlight and, and or nikon however you want to pronounce it and uh, don't get that one you know i still have it <laughs> if you want to get that one get it from me i have it for sale i give you a good price but basically the big big down draw of this one is the batteries it has just like these batteries that you don't ever find on the market they're small and it's really hard to find rechargeables even if you do you still have to carry a bunch of them with you because you have to replace them and i think each one each head went like three or something like that so uh, it was just a it's just a pain in the butt they're a little bit harder to diffuse also the twin flashlights because you have to basically attach it to those heads and it's not it's a little harder than attaching it like to this but you can definitely get some amazing results i believe through the lens uses it amazing photographer check out this profile if um, you're not aware of this person check out his blog it's it's amazing you can learn a lot uh, about macro photography and not only that, he understands, um, uh, you know, I don't have that background, but he understands like, you know, all these like how light works and everything like that. For me, it's just, I can give you guys like a breakdown of like uh, how, you know, I learned it. So that's about my first setup. I didn't mention this big thing. And there's a reason because I'm going to talk about my more advanced setup right now. And I'll talk about the diffuser after that. So currently I'm using this so i did an upgrade it's a nikon d7500 
it's good. I really like it. Takes really good pictures. Uh, Nikkor 100 millimeter uh, macro lens, also really good. Big down draw of this. It's heavy. Like I was like surprised when I had to, when I started carrying it. I was just like pretty disappointed to be honest. Really heavy. Like I said, maybe these days I would go with Olympus, but it does take a really good picture. So I'm I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm using the same Godox flashlight. And now this. This, in my opinion, is the most important part in macro photography. <laughs> and that is because the biggest and most important part in photography is light. And in macro photography, you never get enough light. So this will help you to get an evenly distributed cone of light right in front of your lens where your subject is. So that's what's amazing about this diffuser. If you decide to not spend too much money on a lens, not too much money on a body, it's totally fine. But either buy the good diffuser. This one is MK diffuser. And you can find a person on Facebook, Marcus Khan. Like I said, he's one of the macro photography legends. And he builds them per order and he will send them to you. It is a little bit pricey, but I, I had mine for about two years and it's still holding strong. I still don't need another one. It's still good. So I highly recommend it. And then there is also Facebook group, Macro. I believe it's a homemade diffusers for macro photography. You can find a lot of tips on how to build your own. That can be very inexpensive. That can go like a few bucks. Basically, all you really need is a foam and something to make sure the light doesn't you know, just escape. That's about diffusers. And like I said, if you don't want to spend a lot of money on Nikon or Canon lens, you know, it's totally fine. You can also get something like, where did I put it? I brought it out here. Here it is. Raynox. It's a small little clip-on that you just attach to the back of your lens with, you know, you just clip it on. And you can use it on any lens. I recommend it on like a long lens, like something like 100 millimeters to 300 millimeters. And you can just pop this on and it'll basically serve as a magnifier. Uh, you can take macro pictures and you can get some amazing results with this. Again, uh, let me give a quick shout out to person that I think has some of the best results with this. And it's Brandon and his account is uh, macro by Brandon 2 on Instagram. So go check him out. He does all kinds of photography. He doesn't use it just Raynox, but if you scroll, you can find some like real gems done with the, with the Raynox, like really, really good photography. So I recommend that this is only about $50 uh, on Amazon, b &H, or any of these, uh, you know, sites. We also use it for our macro footage on our camcorder. And we basically just pop it on our Sony. We have a Sony AX53. We just pop it on and then we want to get a little bit closer and it works well, you know. So this is uh, for somebody who likes to maybe go out and take pictures of like, let's say like birds and occasionally sees a bug and is like oh man i wish i had a macro lens well you know you can just get this pop it on the end of your lens and you're good to go so it's really good uh, third way to go when it comes to lenses you can also get extension tubes those uh, are really good too you can basically just mount uh, them on your dslr or your camera and then you mount the lens on them and they work well one reason why i prefer this is because you can take it on and off and you're not completely committed to just macro uh, or you can use your macro lens let's say i have a macro lens one to one and i put this on and i go even you know i can get like three to one or i think it's put 3.5 or maybe even more so you can go to like a ultra macro so that's pretty cool now let me talk about my camera settings my camera settings are my f-stop is usually pretty high around 20 and sometimes i depending on the conditions i lower it or i can even sometimes go higher because i keep my iso usually around 200 and again sometimes uh, i go lower if the conditions are awesome obviously 100 being you know the optimal the goal but i usually start around 200 we also shoot at night often so that's the reason why and my ISO is 200. Let me see what I forgot. I'm back. And my f-stop is 1 uh, and then the backslash 200. That should give you enough speed to basically catch even flying insects. So those are my camera settings. Now I shoot handheld. You can also buy a macro rail where you basically uh, put your camera on a tripod, put it on a rail, and then you do small adjustments where you can get your camera closer or farther it's great but when you are out in a field and you're shooting insects you want to go handheld even though it's a little bit of a practice it's a little bit of a technique usually what i do i try to get the eyes in a focus 
And if the bug is moving or if it's windy, I usually make myself micro adjustments by kind of like waving until, you know, I get it right. And then I just do a burst. And same thing I do when I'm doing stacking. Basically, I try to find the closest that I can get in a focus on the subject being closest to me. And I uh, shoot a first shot and then I slowly uh, keep shooting and I just get closer and closer and I just keep getting different depths of field. Basically, that's what stacking means. In macro photography, you get very shallow depth of field. What it means is basically like, let's say I'm shooting right here is me and here is a wall and this is the depth of field that I'm getting, right? And in macro photography, you would only get about this much of it in focus. The rest of it would be out of focus. So what stacking means is basically you uh, take a picture of this part, this part, this part, this part, this part, this part, and then you put them all together and you get a, one picture out of that. So that's what stacking means. I do it and like I said, I showed you <laughs> briefly my technique, uh, my air camera. I will talk a little bit about how I put those pictures together because some cameras, they can stack it for you, but I have to do it later in a Photoshop. So that's going to be in a part two of this video. All right. And the best time to go and shoot macro. Early morning when the bugs are still not active and they kind of cold, the sun is not completely out. Uh, so that's the best time. You can also get them covered in water juice so you can get some creative, uh, fun photography uh, going and at night and i really like to go out at night because the bugs are pretty active and they kind of don't it seems like they almost don't mind humans they kind of do their own thing and they're not as afraid of humans as much so we like going out at night okay and a couple of last things one why macro photography is awesome so for somebody like me who appreciates nature but i wasn't really much about going out there and exploring to be honest i would just more like go into if i would go on a vacation i would go into a city maybe go to a museum maybe go get a coffee and that would be kind of my thing and uh, once i picked up macro photography that completely changed we would go and we would stay in costa rica in a little casita and we would uh, have a nature ride everywhere around us you walk outside you see snakes you know you see toads and i really started enjoying that aspect and Right now, I'll be doing things that I would never even think of, like going out at night to, you know, to take pictures of bugs, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And so that's really good. It also combines art and basically that hiking part, you know, that active part. So I think it's a really good combination. So macro photography is really cool and it took us to some exotic places. We went to, like I said, Costa Rica twice and we had a really good time exploring caves and we had a volcano basically right there. We didn't climb it, we didn't have enough time basically because we were looking for bugs and stuff like that. Some of the touristy stuff we didn't end up doing. But we saw amazing waterfalls and, you know, a lot of, lot of bugs. So that was really good. We also went to Croatia all before basically the pandemic hit and we definitely want to get back to it once the pandemic is over. Croatia is a total gem in Europe. Like you can see a lot of bugs there. Then we also would go to places in the United States that was already after the pandemic. We went to Utah and Arizona and surprisingly there's a lot of life in desert. I really love going out at night in desert. You can see so many things. We saw assassin fly feeding on a beetle in the middle of the night. You know, I was not the middle of the night, like kind of like early in the night, but still it was pretty amazing. They have tiger beetles, which I didn't actually get to photograph. But I'm a little bummed out about that. But we saw some solifugas, you know, some camel spiders. Basically, every night we would go out, there was something new. A lot of sleeping wasps and sleeping bees, and they are really cute because they basically sleep on uh, solitary wasps and bees. They sleep on on plants and they basically just hold on to them with their mandibles. So that's really cute. So we saw a lot of those. So these are some of the big uh, benefits of macro photography and a couple of reasons why I in really enjoy it. And lastly, so we're gonna do a part two of this video where I'm gonna be talking about more of like about Photoshop settings and stuff like that and about stacking the photo graphs in Photoshop so it may be boring for some people who come here for bugs only but we probably going to do a video about mantids first because we have a really cool mantid at home right now Bodwing mantis we call her Tina and she is a riot she is a blast completely different than other mantids that we kept before because usually when you keep a mantid it sits in one place and waits for the prey to get to it and ambushes it Tina's different. Tina, if she sees a prey, she'll start running after it. Doesn't even try to pretend that she's like being cryptic and mimicry and nothing like that. She doesn't use it. She just runs after it and grabs it. So she's a lot of fun. So this is my fourth mantis and I raised them from tiny little nymphs. So I think I can do a little bit of a 
care sheet and a little bit of a video about how to keep them then we probably do the part two of uh, this video that you're currently watching i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did hit the subscribe button like button and notifications button feel free to make any comments about if there's anything else i can talk about in the part two i uh, hope to see you soon all right ciao and i forgot about one thing when you go out at night don't forget your lights <laughs> so i forgot to mention one thing we use litra torches and these are amazing little lights like this they are waterproof shock resistant and they produce pretty strong light there i believe it's like 1600 lumens their battery lasts anywhere depending on the lowest settings it can last from three to four hours so I should put a little Velcro when I have it in my diffuser too when I go out at night so I can get a little bit of a focus light on the back because uh, otherwise I wouldn't really see what I'm shooting. It would be all completely dark. So again, Litra Torch 2.0. These are really good. I highly recommend those. And if you're going to be getting one, see if you can actually find deal for two because you will probably be getting another one in a, in, in a future. They're really useful for anything even around the house because they also have a magnet on the back. So if you're fixing a car, boom, you can just pop it there on a the hood and you can be fixing a car. Really good. All right, guys, so that is definitely it from me. And if you haven't subscribed to us, please do so. And also you can follow us on Facebook at Spider Cafe and you can follow me on Instagram at insect underscore paparazzi. All right, ciao. Later. Next video.